Welcome to our service today. Wow, what a great day to be alive in Jesus. Well, a number of great things are going to happen today. I want to take you for the offering. I want to take you right to the website. It's cscc-family.org. And if you go there, it's going to direct you how you can give your offering. PayPal and Zelle. You can call in with a card. You can send it by, by uh, U.S. mail. Any number of ways you'd like to contribute. We want to thank you for your faithfulness during this season of time. Well, a lot of things coming up this week, really special events. First of all, this coming Tuesday night at 7 o'clock is our church-wide prayer meeting. There's some very specific things the Lord's laid on my heart for us to bring to prayer. So if you'll go to the website, the link is right there. Tuesday night at 7 o'clock, please come and join us as we bind our hearts together by faith and begin to focus our prayers like a laser beam this week on some very specific things. Secondly, uh, on Thursday night, of course, every Thursday, we have Bible study on Facebook. I'm having a delightful time with you in the Scriptures every Thursday night at 8 o'clock going through different parts of the Bible. So please join me for that. Now, next Sunday is a very important Sunday for us. It's our lawn service. It's our service on the lawn. I'm going to ask you to come join us if you feel comfortable on being out here. If you don't feel comfortable, that's okay. That's cool. You can join us online just like regular. Regular online service will happen at 945 at 1030 outside on the lawn. You can come join us. We'll practice social distancing. We'll bring our masks with us, the whole deal. Now, a couple special things are going to be happening that day. First of all, we're having two, not one, but two baby dedications happening that day next Sunday. And secondly, um, there's a young man, I think he's about six or seven years old, that had a heart, a dream to feed the neighborhood. So he did that, and you know what we're going to do next Sunday? We're going to give him an arrow, a hero's arrow. So we'll make that presentation next Sunday on the lawn to he and his mother and his family. So you don't want to miss that. So, all right, I think that's it for the week. God bless you. Enjoy the service today.
morning, everyone. Thank you, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, the fact that you're just here just says that um, the Lord wants to say something to you. Um, this morning I woke up and I was feeling some anxiety. Um, didn't really feel like facing tomorrow, having to deal with tomorrow. And then I was reminded that God has gone before me. And in Isaiah 41, 10, he tells us to not be afraid because he's with us. To not fear because he will help us and he will strengthen us. So I just want to encourage you with that today. Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you that you never leave us alone to our um, to just face our anxiety by ourselves. But you go before us and you walk with us and you cover us from behind. So God, during this time, would you remind us of the truths? Would you help us to see the lies that we believed and remind us of the truths so that we can switch those things out and have your truth embedded in us? We love you, Lord, and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thing for you to do, and your hand 
is moving right now you are still showing up at the tomb of every lazarus and your voice is calling me out miracles miracles when you move such an easy thing for you to do and your hand is moving right now you're still showing up you are still showing up at the tomb of every lazarus and your voice is calling me out and right now i know i know you're able and my It's Jericho, and my walls are all Everything is possible, now. yes. Everything's possible by the power of the Holy Ghost. A new wind is blowing right it's now. blowing right now. Breaking my heart of soul, taking over like it's Jericho, yes. And my walls are all crashing and right now and right now I know it I know your way I know it my God come through again you can do all things yes you can you can do all No, you never lost a battle. 
Not knowing how we'll get through this test But holding on to faith you know best And nothing can catch you by surprise You've got this figured out And you're watching us now and when it looks as if we can't win, you wrap us in your arms and step in. And everything we need you supply. You got this in control, standing here. Not knowing how we'll get through this test. But holding on to faith you know best Nothing can catch you by surprise You've got this figured out And you're watching us now And when it looks as if we can't win You wrap up You wrap us in your arms and step in and everything we need you supply you got this in control and now we know that you made a way when our backs were against the wall and it looked as if it was over you you made a way and we're standing because you made a way And now we're here Looking back on where we've come from Because of you and nothing we've done To deserve the love and mercy you've shown your grace was strong enough and now we're here now we're here looking back on where we come from because of you and nothing we've done to deserve the love and mercy you've shown but your grace was strong enough to pick us up and you you made a way when our backs were when our backs were against the wall and it looked and it looked as if it was over you you made a way and we're standing and we're standing here only because you made was over you you made a way and we're standing here only because you made a way and you move mountains you cause walls to fall with your power you perform 
You cause the walls to fall with your power. You perform miracles and there is nothing that's impossible. And we're standing here only because you, you move, you move mountains. You move mountains, oh, you move mountains, you move mountains, you move mountains, you cause walls to fall with your power. You perform miracles, and there is nothing that's impossible. And we're standing here only because you made a way. Made a way. You made a way. You made a way don't know how but you, you did it made a way don't know how but you, you did it made a way i don't know how but you, you did it made a way and i don't know why but i'm grateful made a way i don't know why I'm grateful made a way. I don't know why, but I'm grateful made a way. And we're standing here, and we're standing here only because you made a way. Are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin, Jesus is calling. Are you hurting? Are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin, Jesus is calling. Are you hurting? Are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin, Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end? Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Are you hurting? Are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin, Jesus is calling. Have you come? Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Oh, come, oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide for 
forgiveness was born with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was born with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Leave your regrets and mistakes. Leave behind your regrets and mistakes. Come today, there's no reason to wait. Jesus is calling. Bring your sorrow, bring your sorrows and train them for joy. From the ashes, a new life is born. Jesus is calling. Leave behind your regrets and mistakes. Leave behind your regrets and mistakes. Come today, there's no reason to wait. Jesus is calling. Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy. Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy. From the ashes, a new life is born. Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was born with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was born with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, what a Savior. Isn't he wonderful? Oh, what a Savior. Isn't he wonderful? Sing hallelujah. Christ is Hallelujah. 
Isn't he wonderful? Oh, what a savior. Isn't he wonderful? Bow down before him, for he is Lord of all. Sing hallelujah, for Christ is risen. Bear your cross as you wait for your crown. Tell the world of the treasure you have found. Jesus is calling. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you because not only are you awesome and wonderful and lovely, you are so much more than mere words can describe. We love you. And that may seem like a small thing because we say we love a lot of things, but Lord God, we love you. So no, we don't have any reason to fear. We have nothing to fear, for you are a light in our salvation. Because you have never lost a battle. You have never wasted a battle. And in every battle, there is joy and there is victory because we know that you have won. So yes, Lord, you have made a way. When we didn't think we knew what to do, you wrap us in our arms. You wrap us in your arms and you've made a way. And we are forever grateful, forever grateful, forever grateful. So, oh, what a Savior. Isn't he wonderful? Sing hallelujah, for Christ is risen. Jesus, where would we be without you? Where would we be without you? Father, thank you, thank you. Thank you, 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 thank you. I could say thank you forever. Prepare our hearts for the word. Open our eyes, open our ears, open our hearts, open our minds. Let not what we have heard today or experienced today kind of fall to the wayside. May every encounter with you bring about change and evolution in us. Oh, we love you. Thank you. Thank you. Touch every house, every family, everyone tuning in. Show up in ways that we cannot understand or explain, but we just know, Lord God, that there is no other explanation but you. May our lives and our image reflect nothing but you. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, Chester Street Community Church. Wow, that was incredible worship. I love that song, Come to the Altar, right? It says, come to the altar. Oh, what a Savior. Isn't he wonderful? Well, I can't think of a better way to start a message than that. So let's pray together. Father, we thank you that you have given to us a wonderful Savior. Lord, you are wonderful in every sense of the word. Holy Spirit, I thank you that you are present every time people come together in your name, either together physically or together virtually. Lord, you're always there in the midst of them. Holy Spirit, I pray that today would be in the midst of us right now as we consider the text that stands before us in the book of Philippians. Lord, I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you had your hand on the Apostle Paul and every author of the scriptures as they wrote. Lord, as they wrote the text, you were there. You led their pen. And Lord, today I pray you would lead our hearts today as we listen and hear your scriptures. We love you and give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, well, today I'm going to work out of the book of Philippians chapter 2, verses 12 through 18. Now, I'm going to be reading today from the New Living Translation. Now, that's a little bit odd for me because my typical translation I use is my NASB right here. You'll see why I chose this particular text in just a minute. 
to let me read for you Philippians chapter 2, verses 12 through 18. Dear friends, you always followed my instructions when I was with you. And now that I'm away, it is even more important. Work hard to show the results of your salvation, obeying God with deep reverence and fear. For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases Him. Do everything without complaining and arguing so that no one can criticize you. Live clean, innocent lives as children of God, shining like bright lights in a world full of crooked and perverse people. Hold firmly to the word of life. Then, on the day of Christ's return, I will be proud that I did not run the race in vain and that my work was not useless. But I will rejoice even if I lose my life pouring it out like a liquid offering to God, just like your faithful service is an offering to God. And I want all of you to share that joy. Yes, you should rejoice, and I will share your joy. Well, that's it. I've, I've entitled today's message, Work It Out. So and for many years, that first verse, it says, um, I want to read to you in the New American Standard Translation. It says, verse 12, so then, my beloved, just as you've always obeyed, not just in my presence only, but also much more in my absence, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. That fear and trembling, that text, it, it always messes me up. Because it just sounds like I should be you know, walking around in fear and trembling as I consider God. No, that's why I chose this particular translation today to read from. Uh, let me also read to you uh, from the, what is this, the Good News Bible. It says, um, keep on working with fear and trembling to complete your salvation. Well, I'd like to suggest to you today that every one of you, have, if you've met Christ as your personal Savior, then you are in a salvation relationship with Him. And here's what I'm going to call you to do today, just to work it out, live it out, work out your walk with Christ before men. Now, and here's what it says, with reverence and fear in verse 12. I like those two words, don't you? Reverence, that means yeah, you, you, you're, you're, you revere who God is. All right, so let me make a suggestion to you. If today you got a knock on your door and President Obama was at the door, <laughs> oh, wow, can you imagine? Go, oh, come in, Mr. President, come in. You would give him, you would lay out the finest cutlery you have. You would bring out the fun, your fe- favorite dish that you make. You would make this whole thing so wonderful for him. Because you have reverence for the president of the United States, the ex-president. But I want you to know that every day, God comes knocking on your door every day. It's someone who's more revered than President Obama, more revered than any human being you've ever met upon the face of the earth. And that's the daily opportunity that you and I have to walk out our salvation with great reverence for who he is, exalting him to, who he, to his rightful place. What is his rightful place? Above all things on heaven, in heaven, above all things on earth, above all things under the earth. He is the all in all, as the Apostle Paul says, in another place. So work out your salvation with reverence and fear. Now, this, is, this fear is not, oh, I'm so afraid, I'm so afraid. No, this is the fear that means uh, to be awe. You're in awe of who he is. So today, I'm going to ask you, are you walking out your salvation with great reverence. Now, here, here's what I often think about God as my best friend. He is. God is certainly my best friend. At the same time, I can so best friend him, I forget to put him in his rightful place as king of kings and lord of lords, the, the maker of the cosmos. He hung, he hung the stars on nothing and gave names to them all. He created everything you can see and things you can't see. He created the universes, the multiple universes that are out there. That's how big your God is. All right, so now look at verse 13. Verse 13 talks about, he gives you both the desire and the power to live righteously. Now, that's very interesting because sometimes I think, Lord, do I have the desire to live righteously? Of course I do. Why is that? Because he gave me the desire. Without Christ, I would have no desire to do what's right. Without Christ, I would do wrong things every day. That would what I would chase after wrong things every day. He puts two things in my life and two things in your life. Number one, the desire to do right and the power to do right. So here's the key. The key is 
Listen, this is the key to everything. It's the power of the Holy Spirit. So every day, you and I have the Holy Spirit dwelling within us. And all we have to do is tap into that power. The desire is given to us by by God at salvation to please Him in all things. And then He gives us the internal power called the Holy Spirit to power our lives every day to do, to walk the righteous path. Now, every day there's opportunities to walk off the righteous path. Let's face it, right? Temptations are out there all the time trying to draw us in this way, draw us this way, charm us that direction. And all the time, every day, as we work out our salvation with reverence and fear toward who He is, He's already given us everything we need in the toolbox, if you will, to to walk the righteous walk. Ah, What's next here? Uh, Don't complain and argue. (laughs) What? Let me read that again. Don't complain and argue. That's verse 14. Don't complain and argue. Well, let me tell you what complaining is. Um, Psalms 23 says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Another translation says, The Lord is my shepherd, and I am satisfied with his management of my life. He gives us everything pertaining to life and godliness. So we begin to complain about things. Um, God has given you everything. And every day he, he equips you to live your life and without complaining. So when I complain about things, I just, it's a dissatisfaction that's rumbling somewhere just under the surface. So I'm going to say to you if, you, if you have trouble about complaining about things, approach every day this way. Father, thank you for the beautiful day that you've given to me. Lord, I pray I would be satisfied with everything you've provided for me. And I absolutely t- promise you, Lord, I will not complain about anything. I'm not going to complain about my, about my car, about the house I live in, about the, my neighbors. I'm just going to embrace what you have given to me, embrace what you've blessed me with. Now, don't argue. I, I think it's important that the Apostle Paul does this a lot with, with the relationships between people in the New Testament church, right? Because let's face it, people are people no matter where you go, no matter what culture you find yourself in, and this is the tendency of people. If you get too many people in a room, they're going to argue about something, right? They're going to find something to disagree about and argue about. Well, Paul simply says, don't argue. There are certain things we're going to agree to, to disagree on. Right? So there are, even doctrinally, there are some churches believe this way about something, or that way about something. Don't argue. In fact, I just try never to argue about anything. Argue is just such a painful process, right? And you get unkind feelings going on. Live in peace and harmony. That's, that's the answer here. Living in peace and harmony. Father, I pray for the church right now. Lord, your bride, the beautiful bride of Christ on the face of this earth, Lord, I pray for us that we would not argue one with another. Even if we disagree with one another on things, we would agree to disagree agreeably. Lord, and let love and charity be stronger than any disagreements uh, that we have. So, Father, thank you for your church. Bless your church in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, next in verse 15, it says, Live clean and shine bright. Let's take live clean first. Have you ever noticed the billboards on 95? It says, live clean, bro. Oh, I love those billboards. For the longest time, I had no idea what that even meant. Well, live clean, bro, is a, is a food service. They send you uh, boxes of food, uh, good food, clean food. I, would it be cool if, if, if along the way you would see billboards that say, as reminders to you and I, live clean, bro. <laughs> live clean. What does that mean, live clean? That means... You live righteously. It means you look like Jesus in your interactions with people. That means you're, you're doing the right things. You're living clean. You're being clean. Your mind is clean. Your hands are clean. Your heart is pure. So that's what working out your salvation is all about. Because, see, the tendency is for us not to live clean. We live in a pretty dirty world. We live in a pretty stinky world. And it's easy for the stink to get on us if we're not very intentional every day about living clean. So say to one another right now in your house, live clean, bro. (laughs) What's the second thing? It says shine bright. Uh, That's verse 15. Let me find that. 
uh, live clean, innocent lives as children of God, shining like bright lights in a full of a crooked and perverse people. Wow. He must have known our generation, right? Paul knew who, where we lived. A crooked, perverse, and dark world in the middle of all that. So let me tell you, if you walk into a room that's dark, ah, pitch black dark, and you turn a light on, the, the light chases the darkness away. So if you and I begin to work out our salvation before men, what happens is that bright light in your life chases away all the darkness in the room. So you walk into work tomorrow, and um, you see yourself as a light. Not like a 20-watt light bulb, but like a 150. You know those three light light bulbs? One, two, three. You're like the third, the highest brightness on the light bulb when you walk in the room. When people see that and hear that, they are automatically, instantly changed. Do you know why they're changed? Because your light uh, exemplifies the darkness in them, and sometimes what they do is they feel bad about their darkness. What a great opportunity you have today to live clean and shine bright. Now, live clean and shine bright is not just applicable on a good day, right? Because there's some days, let's face it, let's be honest with each other here. No kidding, right? Some days you were having a really good day, man. You feel like you could charge hell with a water pistol, right? Other days, it's like, oh, man, you get up kind of grumbly. You forget about the grumbling and complaining business here. You go to work, you get your thing. Before you know it, you know, it's... It's uh, you become part of the darkness. Now, I'd like to suggest to you today that if you're going to work it out, your salvation, then you must shine brightly in the middle of a dark, crooked, and perverse world. What's the next thing? Verse 16. Ah, this is good. This is good. Hold firmly to the word of life. <laughs> this is the word of life. Hold firmly to this. You see, because there are a lot of things you could hold firmly to. You could hold firmly to um, a creed of some kind. You could hold firmly to, to a certain value system. But if it doesn't match this right here to the word of life, then somehow you're just missing the target. How do you work out your salvation? You work out your salvation by picking this Bible up every day. It doesn't matter if it's a physical Bible or, or a Bible in your device. Somehow you've got to read this thing and let it affect you. Let the word of life affect you. I promise you, I promise you, you can take this to the bank. If you pick this up every day and you allow the Holy Spirit, you just give him 15 minutes a day in this book, I promise you, it'll be the antidote for the crooked and perverse world that you live in. So how do you do that? Uh, you discipline yourself every day. You don't let a day go by that you don't pick it up. You don't read it. You don't absorb it. And here's what you have to do. Lord, let this word shape my thinking. I don't want to think like the world. I don't want to think like my grandma, my grandfather. I want to think like the word of God. So today, pierce, let the word of God pierce my innermost thoughts, pierce my heart, pierce everything about me. Let me marinate in your scriptures. So that, now watch, watch the rest of it now. So that on the day of Christ's return, oh, there it is. On the day of Christ's return, I think about the return of Christ a lot, particularly in times like this, don't you? I, if I've heard this question once, I've heard it 100, 200 times recently. Pastor, what do you think? Is this the, is this the end of the world? <laughs> See, now we're thinking, aren't we? Because our whole world's upside down. It's topsy-turvy. Things have changed around. And now people are saying, oh, is this the end times? Well, I'd like to say to you, yeah, if I were you, I think I'd fasten my seatbelt pretty tight because I don't think we've just seen anything yet. As the time draws closer to his coming, the world will be shaken up. In fact, the book of Hebrews says, all things will be shaken that can be shaken. In fact, if you look at the world, at the whole globe, the only thing that cannot be shaken is the church, is the body of Christ. The economies can be shaken. They are right now. Um, you're, the world as you know it, it's all shaken up. A year ago, 
have you, have you had the ability to look forward 12 months, a year ago? Would you believe that everywhere you look, be people around walking with masks on everywhere? <laughs> no, man. Would you, a year ago, could you imagine the sales of hand sanitizer? <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, Jesus is coming soon. You need to hear that. Jesus is coming soon. What if he comes today? What if this is the day of the second coming of Christ? Wow. I would say, here I am, Lord, take me. <laughs> That's what I would say. Uh, how would you live your life differently if you knew that this day today was the last day you'd spend on earth? What would you do? What would you do differently than your normal routine? So Paul says, um, live clean, shine bright, hold firm to the word of God, so that when he comes, this is Paul speaking, I will have not run in vain. I gave my life for you. I showed you the example, how to live for Jesus. Ah, oh, that's it. So I'm going to ask you today, are you ready for the second coming? That's an incredible question, by the way. Are you ready for the second coming of Christ to happen today? I like to keep my books short with God, all right? So I like, I, I like to live a, a life of repentance. If I've blown it somehow, I want to repent right away. I want to be clean and ready to go every day. Every day I want to be ready to go. If it's today, let's go, Lord. Let's make it happen right now. So now he goes on to talk about in verse 17. Um, but I will rejoice even if I lose my life. Pour it out like a liquid offering to God. So in the Old Testament, there's a sacrificial system that they had in the Old Testament. You would bring the bulls, the goats, you bring it to the altar. You would slay the animal. You'd pour blood out. But there's also something called a drink offering. So you would take wine. you come and pour it at the base of, of the altar. That's an offering being poured out. That's what Paul's referring to here. He's saying that I know my time is short. <clears throat> I'm in prison right now. I don't know how many days I have left, but I know my time is short. I feel like I'm a drink offering being poured out at the altar. If you are a drink offering, if you see yourself as a drink offering every day being poured out, that means you're not living for yourself. That means you're living for God and for others. That's the pouring out of who you are. That's, that's not worrying about my, oh, is my cup full? Do I have enough for myself? No, 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 no. The kingdom life, living out, working out your salvation with fear and trembling is this, being poured out, pouring yourself out for others all the time, pouring yourself out for God all the time. You know what I find? Is that as, a per, as people, we are very self-centered, right? very self-focused, always wanting things to benefit us. What happens if you live your life for the benefit of others? Lord, here I am. Pour me out as a drink offering for the sake of others. I'll take the back seat. I'll give somebody else the front seat. I'll, I'll take... I'll be last on the line when I have the meal. I'll, I'll be last. I'll let others eat first. There's something about putting yourself back and putting others forward. All right. So almost done here. Look at this last section. About um, just like your faithful service is offering to God. And I want all of you to share in that joy. Shared joy. Um, when I considered the church... When I work out my salvation, I believe that there ought to be joy in my life. Have you ever met a joyless Christian? Uh, I have, trust me. Uh, have you ever met a Christian that's like, you really can't tell they're a Christian? Because they always seem like they're complaining about something, or they're upset about something, they're wringing their hands, they're worried. No, man, joy is part of this deal. Joy is part of the deal. Right? The joy of the Lord is your strength, Nehemiah says. So if you need strength today, Tap into the joy that belongs to yours by virtue of the fact that you belong to Jesus. All right, so how are you going to work this thing out? You're going to work out your salvation by doing these things. Walking in reverence and fear for God, knowing that you have the desire to please Him and you have the power to please Him. Stop complaining. Stop arguing. Live clean, bro. Shine brightly. Live your life according to the Word of God. Let it influence everything that you hear, say, and do. Hold firm. Know that Jesus is coming soon. And if He comes today, 
be ready. Finally, you're just a life being poured out for the sake of others and for the sake of God, and you should have joy in your life. If you don't have joy in your life, I want to pray for you right now. Ready? Father, thank you for joy. Lord, that's an incredible thing that we can't even put our hands around exactly. We understand and know it comes from the Holy Spirit. Joy is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray for every person that's hearing this or seeing this today that the joy of the Lord would fill them up to the fullest measure, to the place of overflowing. Lord, you've called us to work out our salvation. Lord, today, as we work it out, let us work it out as men of joy and women of joy and children of joy. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, hope you've enjoyed our time in the book of Philippians. God is a great God. Have a great week. God bless you. Today's sermon was a challenge for me. It was a good one, but it was a challenge in the sense that I had to look inside myself and see where I'm at with my salvation. The title alone, Work It Out, says it all. Because that means that I have to do a part. I have to put some effort in, in order to get some beneficial results. With that being said, two things actually spoke out to me. And the first was not to complain. For me, that's a challenge. Only because I find myself for the past, I would say, two or three months, complaining a lot at work. Because my, if, if it's not my computer, that's not working. It's my supervisor that's not making the decision that he needs to make or whatever it is. But I've been complaining so much that at times I have to stop and re-examine myself. So this today actually spoke to me because now I know that I need to be grateful for what I have, take things as it is, and not complain. The other topic was to live clean and shine bright. And I think both are put together because if you live clean, you will shine bright. And for me, I find that as a challenge because at work, when I'm faced with coworkers who are nasty and saying things behind your back, you want to do the same. But I find that with just remembering that I have the power of the Holy Spirit within me, I can use Him to be my guide. I can use Him to lead me into a righteous path. I use the mantra, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, to you, Christ. And whenever I find myself living not so clean or my light isn't that bright, I use that and I say it over and over so that I will be able to walk the right path. So with that being said, I know there's a lot that I need to do. I have been challenged by PA to walk righteously, to live Christ out daily. And the end of it all is, Am I truly ready to say I'm ready for the second coming of Christ? Am I truly ready today for that?